Okay, at that point, uh, I've, I've got to decide something. I've got to decide if I won or lost, right? So you've got this next set of control logic that's going to determine if I won or lost a game or if it was a tie. So let's look at that control logic right there. Um, so basically what it's done, it's saying <laughs> if the get text uh, one and button, so these are horizontal wins, right? So in horizontal, if one is equal to two and two is equal to three, then, then uh, and button one dot get text is not equal to nothing, I guess that's something, then I won, right? Here's the next win condition, or else if that didn't happen, then that's the middle row, right? Four, five, six, and seven. Then the last row, seven, eight, uh, and nine. And then if that's all true, I won. So if I got a middle row, a, a, a high row, a, middle, a top row, a middle row, a bottom row, I won. Then I have to look at the uh, verticals, right? So, so if one is equal to four is equal to seven, right? Then I got a column. And then the middle column, and then the last column, right? And then true equals a one. But and then I have to look at the diagonals, right? So if I got a one, a five, or a nine, I got a diagonal. Or if I got a three, a seven, or no, a three, a five, or seven, I got the other diagonal. So all that is set equal to equal to win to true. But else, if that didn't happen, I got a win equals false. So I only have one more thing to do once all that control language has has executed. Then if win is equal to true, I, I bring up my J option pane, which is this little tiny pane. We talked about that at the beginning of the lessons. And I'm going to show, hey, uh, letter X wins. Ta-da! Or else if, say it's not true, win is false, uh, tie game. So no one won. So and, and, you, and at the very end, I just need to run all the code. So basically, I'm just going to declare this constructor and run the method. And that's tic-tac-toe. What do you think? Got it? Welcome to J, J, uh, Welcome to Swing, and isn't it powerful? I mean, this is actually a fairly simple code, and I think it's doing something that's, you know, that's relatively complex. And of course, I already know how to cheat the game, so I can win anytime I want to. Hey, I won! Yay! Okay, good. <laughs> so, and, and I think what we need to do at this point is, you know, appreciate that and move on and do a little bit more swing before we, before we move on. And I'm going to bring up my games thing right here. And so we got through tic-tac-toe. But before we move on to tic and I want to talk a little bit about J-Panel versus J-Frame. Because basically what J-Panel is, is kind of a, a, a kind of... J-Frame basically is like, the, like a window frame. And J-Panel is like stuff that you can actually stick stuff into, like to group things together. It's a lighter version, and it doesn't have all the J-frame stuff. So typically what you're going to see what happens is people are creating a J-frame, then they're putting a panel into the J-frame, and they may, for example, be throwing buttons into that panel. And we already saw an example. So I want to go through the example I went through last time. Uh, I think it was called Two Buttons. We'll see. Let me just bring this up. Uh, uh, was it Simple Button? I think it was Simple Button, but which really wasn't simple at all. Okay. So we talked about this last time. I just want to talk about it again so you get it because it actually is using, let's see if I'm saying this right. No, that's my simple button. Excuse me, buttons. My apology. Buttons is what I want to talk about. There we go. Because it actually is using pain. J-panel, excuse me. Okay, ready? So let's start at the beginning. Now, we could have simplified all this by just going ot.wildcard, right? And we could have went swing dot wildcard and we'd be done an event dot wildcard would be done but these are the spef specific imports and many times people see wildcards as sloppy so he's specifically bringing in the particular things that you need in this particular code he's going to extend buttons with j frame so you've already seen that before he's going to add the toolkit because why he's going to dimensionalize the screen and he's going to set this into center so if you want to basically um, make your tic-tac-toe game center you're going to want to add this code right here and i think that should be assignment you should come back to this right here get the centering code, put that into the tic-tac-toe game, and center it so your tic-tac-toe game centers on the screen. Do you think you can do that? Okay, that's an assignment. I want to see that next time. And it's pretty easy, too. Just compare the two lines of code, two sets of code. And that's what I do all the time, compare code. You know, if something's not working, I like to go and immediately compare it with something that is working, and, uh, oh, that's what's wrong. So here we go, and so we're centering the code. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a panel, 
and then I'm gonna I have a method inside of JFrame, and that method is called get content pane, and that's a place for me for to add stuff. For example, I'll add a panel to. And so that's a JFrame method, and I add the panel to it. And then a panel A, I don't care about. I'll set that equal to null because I'm going to position everything. And then I start creating these buttons, which we did last time. I add the action listener to it that we've talked about last time. But this time I didn't declare a class outside. I just actually uh, streamlined the code. I wrote the code right in with the button. So add action listener. There's my action performed. I'm rewriting it right there in the code without using implements. And I'm using the toolkit beep. So that's yet another way of doing action listeners. So today I've actually showed you three ways of doing action listeners. One was writing a separate class. Here you're writing it inline. Okay, sometimes it's called inline coding. And the other one is to actually use the implements action at the very beginning of the class and use it to this keyword. So three ways. So there's more ways, one, one more than one way to skin a cat. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and add it, create another button and call that J close. And you already seen the J close. And once again, the action listener is added inline. And then I'm just going to add that to the panel that's already been added to the frame. So I'm adding the I'm adding the uh, buttons called beep to the panel and the close to the panel, and that's already been added to the frame. And now I do, all I do is uh, use this declare an instance. Excuse me, declare an instance and then run that instance. Let me get off of this for a second. Declare an instance and run that instance is what I'm doing here. And I could have just done all. I just hit, I just could have just ran new buttons and that would have worked as well. So let's run the code. And you saw this last time. It's centered in the screen, and I got a close or I got a beep. I'm getting a beep. I don't know how yours not beep beeping. You may have a parameter set that's not letting it grab that particular um, element in your computer. And so that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to go through that one more time and just make sure I emphasize the new way of using the action listener and also the difference between JPanel and JFrame because you're going to see those a lot. So some people will just use JFrame and some people, many people will be using JPanel and throwing things in there and grouping stuff together in a panel.